Hey everyone, how's it going? This is your good friend Robert Plank. If you can hear me, if the audio is working, and you can find the question marks, can you go to the question marks and can you type in, let's just say six exclamation points, all right? One, two, three, four, five, six, hold down that shift key, hit the numeral one, give me six exclamation points, and let's see that question box fill up. I see a lot of familiar faces. And I was just thinking kind of as the different names rolling and I'm seeing like, you know, Josh Shoemaker, Kim Rhodes, Robin Muff, a bunch of people, way too many to list. I was just thinking that many times we kind of we kind of come across some some new person some new connection in our business and we'll meet someone like at a at a seminar or someone will find our blog someone will find our article so you might be attending a webinar like this for me for the first time and these connections these relationships they really really pay off and it just gets to that point where you have enough stuff out there that people just keep coming into your business and joining your business and it grows and everyone's business grows uh, on its own over time and so what I wanna uh, what I was just kind of looking at really quickly was uh, where my the stats from my blog this will come up here so that's my blog and I I only started using this tool this is a tool called jetpack I only started using this a few weeks ago I think um, but it's kinda cool it looks like um, we like I'm looking at my blog and on a particular day you know we have about 200 people coming in and I'm sure that a lot of those people are are new I, sometimes I look at the the search queries people type into uh, to things like Google to end up on my site sometimes I look at um, who's on my sites right now and things like that and like you know what led people some people come and find me from a site like YouTube some people come from uh, someone making a forum post about me reviewing our site so it, it's one of those things where a lot of people end up uh, coming to your sites just because you have so much out there and I know that from uh, from talking to many of you whether it comes to setting up a membership site or just having a publicly facing blog out there everyone's worried about this thing called content right if, if only I had my blog post written then I have all this traffic if only I had all the videos recorded from membership site I'd make a million dollars and the only problem with that is content is about half of the equation you need content and then you need about one half marketing right you need to have I mean, it's one thing to write an article, write a blog post, but you have to get it out there. And that's completely fine, but you just have to be aware that if you're spending all day long, all week long creating content, well, then you're, you're missing out. And I would rather just get that out of the way so that you can get to the fun part, get to the other half of that, which is marketing. For example, I'm coming out with a podcast soon. Apparently, podcasting is some... Uh, some new big thing that's coming back and it's pretty much where you have like an online radio show uh, you create you know audios pu put them out there and people can subscribe to your future uh, you know radio programs basically and that's one of those situations where I gave myself one week to record my goal is to record six one-hour episodes and that way I can just kind of for lack of a better term, drip them out over time. Uh, for now, just put them out one a month. That way I don't have to psych myself back up and get myself excited again to record something. That way I don't have to be one of those people who put out a podcast years ago and then stopped doing it. Now we can continue to be consistent marketers. Um, just like how, you know, for example, my blog, I come out with one blog post per month. And some of those are written in advance. Some of those I, co I come back to and kind of, you know, update or kind of revise and then publish them. But that's one of these sites where I only publish once a month because I'd rather be consistent and only come out monthly as opposed to someone who maybe posted every day and then post for five years. So um, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is how to fill up your membership site or blog with one year of content in just a few clicks before this webinar is over. And now how the heck are we going to do it before the webinar is over? Well, I'm going to be showing you uh, an actual blog, a live blog. We're going to fill it up with content, fill it up with a years of content just to be just to have fun. I was thinking about going for 10 years, but that would be showing off too much. But we're going to be filling it up with one year of content right now today. So pay very close attention, close in all the windows, close in all the doors, all the, the music, the programs, all that good stuff. Um, and I want to, to kind of direct you to, to this little cute graphic I found the other day, which says three simple rules in life. Number one, if you do not go after what you want, you'll never have it, right? Thinking about stuff all day long isn't going to help you. If you do not ask, the answer will always be no. So if you don't go out there and get joint ventures, get traffic, get affiliates, uh, get people to buy your product even, well then what's the point? If you do not step forward, you will always be in the same place. So for me, I know that early on I was 
I was so worried about anything I said. If I made a blog post, if I made a tweet, if I made a a, a blog post, or let's see, blog post, email, anything I could put out there, video, an audio, even a webinar like this, I was always so worried about saying something stupid. And you know what? You will say something stupid. I say stupid stuff all the time, but I, as long as we kind of get that out of the way, well, then let's just move on and and keep putting your your content out there, um, because anyone who who actually you know has a really good brand real good recognition has a book out there has a blog out there you can go and find something on them and i mean i can't think of any like well known whether it's like a marketer or a well known business person where if you did a search for their name you wouldn't find anything that just doesn't happen you search for the name and they find all kinds of stuff so whatever industry whatever niche you're in whatever you use to make money on the internet whatever website you're building up Someone needs to search your name in the search engines and just find a crap load of stuff. And the way to do that is to have a lot of articles and blog posts out there. Um, but a lot of people think that that's something that takes a lot of work, takes a lot of time. But fortunately for you, because we found our, each other, because you found your way to this webinar, we're going to kind of blow past all that. Because I have a question for you, and that's what's the one thing that every online business including you needs and wants and if you can just go ahead type it in the question box you know what do you need what do you need to make more money what do you need to grow your business what do you need to get more email subscribers so I'm seeing um, things coming in I'm seeing things like traffic I'm seeing some guy typing something in Russian I'm seeing content I'm seeing traffic I'm seeing clients I'm seeing leads I'm seeing automation so you and I are thinking about subscribers we're, we're, we're thinking about a lot of the same thing Okay, I say, you know, maybe it's number of leads. Maybe if I can get uh, a thousand new subscribers coming in every day, that'd be awesome. Backlinks. If I could have a million websites linking back to my site, that'd be that'd be crazy awesome. Customers. If I could have, and I, and I do, if I could, but if I could have double the amount of customers I have now, um, who are, you know, so they can look at the products I've already created, they can read the emails I've already ha put on a schedule. They can buy through the order process I've already perfected and just have more customers coming in. You know, what if the thing that you want is higher search engine rankings? They hear that all the time. Well, if only I could get listed on page one for the term street, ultimate street fighting, well, then I'd make a million dollars. Or well, most people um, who responded in the question said traffic. And, you know, I, I read a couple others. We said that buyers, quality content, had to do with leads, quality targeted content. So, so either you listed something similar to this or just like a more detailed version. But everyone's looking for a, a way to get back to their for people to get back to their website. So the question is, well, what's the one thing? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Well, the answer is yes. It's all, you want all of these things, right? You want people coming in on the door all the time, whether you have a service, you have a product. You want people. To, you want to be ranked highly in the search engine so that new people come in because one thing that, one mistake I made for years was relying on the customer base I already had, which meant that I built a list of, I think at that time it was about 5,000 subscribers and I was making a pretty good living, but... I was only talking to the, that group of people, and I wasn't growing that that base, for lack of a better term. And so, if someone dropped out, my business would kind of, kind of decrease a little bit. So we don't want that. We want people coming in the door all the time. That way, if even if we're not the best salesperson, even if we don't have the slickest videos, even if our web page could be a little bit better, well, then we can have people coming in the door all the time. And how do you do that? Well, besides, you know, getting these things called joint ventures or making new connections or basically it's it's basically luck, right? It's basically getting lucky. You talk to a certain number of people and a, out, out of them, a very small percentage will, will talk to you back, maybe become your affiliate, maybe get maybe interview you. Uh, but most business owners are spending tons of time, energy and money spinning their wheels. They say, well, I've heard this thing called writing articles really works. And so I want to create 10 whole articles. And so I've given myself 10 weeks to write 10 articles. And then they spend that 10 weeks and they have 10 articles, which is a really important component of your business. But then they're kind of disappointed when they get you know about 80 clicks back and here's what's kind of funny is well um, let me just bring this up there's this site called Eden articles it's a good site and a bad site it's a good site because it's I think that everyone needs to have at least some articles on this site I mean you see like, like this guy Leslie whoever he is has 300 articles uh, Gail has a hundred articles um, so it's a pretty big site I think last time I checked they had um, I think they had like 2 million articles maybe, maybe pretty close to that. And so this is an important site to get listed on. 
because people will uh, will search something in in a search engine. Easy in articles ranks very highly for many terms, and then uh, when someone clicks on an article, like let me see this person's uh, uh, not blogging but writing an article about this thing called SharePoint, and on the bottom he has a link back to his site. Right, so this is a really great way to get um, to credentialized to get people to link back to your site, uh, and also for another reason because uh, other people who have newsletters can use a site like this and and use your content in their blog in their newsletter, but that link back to your site has to remain. So that's that's a good place, but people get carried away, and they they spend a day writing one article, and they post it to this site. And they don't do anything else, and then they're kind of disappointed when when they're adding content for someone else and not really getting anything in return, and it and so it kind of requires you to look at things a little bit differently. That there are sites out there where you can submit a guest, what's called a guest blog post. There are sites out there where you can submit an article. There are and there are many sites like that, um, but you can't live there. It's a matter of you have your your own site, your own content, and then other sites like this. These are additional, basically, marketplaces where you can put extra copies of your of your content out there. But you can't spend all day building someone else's site for them. And the other thing about that is that well, writing writing's good and coming up, you know, getting in the mood and, and figuring out. Well, let me make like let me list like the top ten. Uh, you know ways to keep your your WordPress blog safe and putting out free content. That's great, except for what I have done in the past when I've seen other people fall into the, this trap of is is coming as publishing thirty articles, thirty blog posts in a week, and then they're done for five years. And that's no fun. And so you need to to schedule out your your content uh, and do things like that. Um, but that's again, that's not the entire big picture. I see people trying to please the search engine gods. I, I haven't checked this one in a while, but if I search Google for the term drip content, awesome, we're still there. Um, when we search that, that, that search term, the number one result is one of our blogs. Number two result is one of our plugins. And by the way, um, this is kind of funny. I haven't updated this this particular blog post in in what two and a half years. Uh, I haven't updated this sales letter in one or two years. Um, there is a blog post from me that's a couple of years old. A blog post from our very good affiliate and friend Roger Isak, who I don't even, I don't even think I have to check to see if he's on this call. He's always on our calls. Um, and so you know we we get a lot of stuff. And out of 16 million results, we control most of the front page and that's great except for I'm not really going to get too excited about it because I might check tomorrow and I'll be gone um, and I don't I don't target a certain keyword I don't worry about ranking for a particular phrase um, because for me it's all about this thing called the 80 20 rule um, I, I only have a certain amount of time in the day I only have a certain amount of time left in the week a certain amount of time left in the year, so I'm not going to concern myself too much. Maybe a little bit, but I'm not going to concern myself too much with things that don't really matter. I want to look at what's making me money, what's not making me money. Having articles out there, being ranked in the search engines, grow my business—that's important. But that's not where most of the money is. It's still necessary, but it's not the most important thing. It's like the most important thing isn't you worrying about this thing called Google Slaps. Google Panda, Google Penguin, uh, almost every day now I see people worrying about Google's going to crack down on the, on WordPress sites. Whatever you do, don't put out a WordPress site. You'll you'll get ranked low in the search engines. Um, basically worrying about the gossip, about the rumors, about the, the doom and gloom, asking what will Google think of this? If I put out my video, uh oh, someone from Google's call center is going to be watching my video and they're going to be, you know, judging me and they might say, well, let's rank this video very low. Well, the only problem is the internet is huge and that Google does have teams of humans, you know, just flipping through sites to make sure that, uh, that they're ranked the, the place that they're supposed to be. But Google doesn't care about you. I honestly don't think Google cares about WordPress um, just because they're too big. So when you worry about will I be penalized, will I be out of business, it's like, well, does a does an ant worry about about you know a car running over it? Well, no, because it's like there's this 
there's a really tiny world and there's a really large world. I mean, I, I kind of look at it like that way. Like I have my, my websites and I can have as many websites as I want. I can have as many articles, as many videos as I want. And I'm still not, I mean, I'm still never going to be a blip on Google's radar and that's fine because Google's intent on controlling and dominating the whole entire internet, the whole entire world and more. And I'm just saying, well, I just want to have my website. I just want to make a, some money. So, so worrying about about Google, about you know whatever and whoever overtakes Google, worrying about some Facebook rules isn't really going to get you anywhere. And there's actually a better way uh, to kind of future proof yourself, Google proof yourself, and and do the things that and kind of comply with Google, but also in a way that you don't have to worry about any kind of rules they might come out with in the future. And if that sounds great, well then here's the answer, okay? What Google wants, what pretty much every search engine wants, if you're looking at Bing, Amazon, even Facebook, uh, what all these sites want is they want people to come to their site, they want people to search their site and get their answers fast because if someone goes to Google and they get a uh, and they they can figure out how do I tie a tie and the the first page and the front page give them exactly what they need to know, uh, then that means that that person will go back to Google again if they want to learn how to tie a bow tie, or if they want to learn how to, now they want how to tie my tie, how do I tie my shoes, right? So these sites they want people to use their site so that they will continue using their site and they'll become a member and they'll click on ads, all that good stuff, but. The thing that has never changed with Google with any website is all these big giant sites. They want people to use their site and get what they want very, very quickly. Because if someone can get uh, what they want from from Google in, in 10 seconds and it takes 10 minutes to do it on Bing, well, then someone's going to use Google because Google is way less frustrating. So that's all they want. All Google wants is for people to get their answers fast. So that means that if someone searches for drip content and they want to know either what it is or they want to get a plugin that that solves that problem for them, and they click, someone clicks on drip content, and they click over here, and they end up buying. Well, then there we go. Google's done their job. And there are a lot of things that people do at Google and the search engines do to make sure that that works. And one of them, which is kind of sneaky, is that if if you search something and click on a page and then click right back, they they record that. And so if they notice that a lot of people are, are clicking on a, a link and coming right back to Google, well, that person, they, they, they didn't find what they wanted to. And then they will, the rank will slowly drop. They'll have, like we said, humans click on this link and look at this web page just very quickly and just kind of say, well, does it look like uh, the answer is being presented right away? Or are they putting it behind an opt-in page? Or is this like a, a, a fake page? Or is this not? not relevant at all and then they will make that drop in the in the rankings a little bit so that's all they want they want people to get their answers fast which means that you provide relevant content which means that you make your site easy to navigate get to the point and whether you put uh, you know put out blog posts in video format whether you write your blog posts whether and even whether you you grab articles like this, let's say you had a blog all about whatever this thing is called SharePoint, and uh, I know what it is, but I don't want to geek you out on this. Um, but if you just made a blog and you filled it up with articles on SharePoint, if you added uh, like YouTube videos about SharePoint, and through luck you ended up ranking highly for certain keywords, and especially if someone was searching like SharePoint 2013, if someone was searching uh, like SharePoint workflow, cloud app, all the long tail stuff, which means like, you know, longer keyword phrases, if you rank highly for that and you deliver what people want, well then Google will reward you for that. Okay? Even if you have content from other sites and they, they do give you a little bit of a boost if you have content or you have some content that's unique to your site. But I have many, many sites where I just take other people's content, which they allow me to use but they rank highly in the search range and actually I get a lot of money from just a handful of blog posts as well and I'll show you those in a little bit. So it's you don't have to worry anymore about duplicate content or do I have the right keywords or even am I saying the right thing have I spell checked? No, just if you can give people the solution to their problem, well then you can you can really make a lot of money. And that goes as far as ranking for free in Google and as far as making sales. Because if you think about it, it's it's there's a lot of overlap, right? Because the point, I mean, what you're trying to do when you're ranked in search engines is getting people to come to your site, right? And so in a way, you're trying to convince Google or convince someone searching that 
what they need to do here is click over to your site. Once someone's on your site, in a way, you have to convince them to keep reading your blog. And if you have some kind of a uh, place to uh, opt in, sign up, then you have to convince people to sign up. And if you deliver relevant content and someone says, okay, well, I like what I read here, I want to know more, I'll sign up, then it, it's not that different from making a sale. And so speaking of making sales, I want to share with you a way to make money right away um, that's always worked. I think it always will work in, in some way, and it's through this thing called resale rights. And um, and this is kind of awesome because because Lance had a site, and I, I, I'm not sure if he still maintains it. I'll have to talk to him. Um, but it's a site called the MRR Club, and it uses this thing called resale rights. And so basically... Um, what resale rights are, it's where you can go to, uh, you can go to someone like a site like this and you can say, okay, well, this book on online profiteers, this book on public speaking, this book on acid reflux, you know, I, I want to buy that and sell it myself. And so for $5 or $4.99, you can click that button, buy it, and they give you some kind of like a, a Word document usually, maybe a PDF document, maybe a, a sales letter, a download page. And you get a business in a box for a few dollars. And it's up to you whether you want to, you know, sell, if you have an existing list to plug into that, if you want to improve that. Uh, but the point is that a lot of people make money from using, buying up rights to other content and using it as a starting point. I've, I've created several products that way where someone had, someone had done the research for me, right? Someone had some kind of video series or some kind of report on an area where maybe I wasn't 100% an expert in that area or maybe I could improve it a little bit. Um, but a lot of people want these things called resale rights. And so Lance created a resale rights club because would you rather get, you know, 10 articles for $10 or an ebook for ten dollars, or ten videos for ten dollars, or maybe get twenty thousand articles, a hundred ebooks, a hundred videos for thirty-seven bucks, and Lance keeps adding to that every single month with updates. Well, that was pretty cool, and um, so that was the reason why other people bought from him is that he would buy up rights to, and he would kind of like look around and figure out well, what what's the what are the hot niches right now? Uh, what should I? What rights should I buy? And then he put them all into a membership site, and what this ended up being was a site that it only made him about a thousand bucks a month. This is when Lance was first getting started. So for for him, I mean, for anyone, a thousand bucks a month. I mean, I'll do that all the time, especially because he only put in an hour a month. So once a month, he'd go to some of these sites, buy up a couple of things, and I mean, they didn't cost very much compared to the money he was making back from the membership site. Buying up a couple of things and then downloading them, putting them as new blog posts in his membership site. So we'd say, okay, post, add new, type in the, the title of this, edit a sales letter, put that in, and then put up a um, put up the, the download link, and that was it. So here's the back end of his site called the MR Club. Uh, he's got th about 300 different products, 300 different posts. He has them um, in different, so he's categorized them so that... Um, like if you kind of look back here, there's like the there's like health stuff like acid reflux. There's maybe self or uh, yeah self help stuff like motivation, public speaking, uh, marketing. So he would kind of categorize this. Uh, he added a search box, and this was just something where people paid a monthly fee to get access to these different resale rights products, kind of like this one, like Facebook Profit Guy Guide, and he just would paste the sales letter right here in the, into the blog and then have a download link and what was kind of clever about what he did about this was the download link is down below right and if you if you had just stumbled across this site it would say something like members need to log in here you now like a button um, and so if you were searching Google for for Facebook profit or maybe Facebook marketing or some kind of term about Facebook well this blog would show up in, in the results in, in several places and so you would click over from a search engine, end up on a site like this, and then see a button to buy. Uh, so this blog kind of did two things in one. It was a membership site, but was also uh, like search engine food. It was also a place to, to get traffic from the search engines. So pretty cool. So what he did was he just went to a resale rights site and checked the license, made sure it was something that he could use, right? Um, he bought the product for like five or ten bucks, downloaded the product itself, the sales page went to WordPress and went 
went up here and set, click on this this button that says new posts add new and then um, just paste it in that sales letter and upload the files and link to it okay so I mean on a, a particular month he would just spend an hour uh, you know for the first half an hour download stuff for the second half an hour unzip upload and add some blog posts so pretty cool stuff pretty easy way of making money but if you think about it well, what's the thing that takes the most amount of time? Well, it's adding all the content, right? Adding, I have to paste in this sales letter, have to paste this other sales letter, takes a lot of time. Um, and this tool we're going to show you at the end, WP Import, if this is your business model, it'll really save you time. So I want to show you with you a business model um, for our one of our sites called Double Agent Marketing. And this is a site where pretty much I just put all the stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else, right? If I want to record an audio about how to build a list uh, or about Facebook or make a video training about this service called Kunaki or how to publish a book on Kindle and it doesn't really fit into any other products that we have I'll put it into the site called double agent marketing and I'm sure that you have something like that I almost guarantee it that you either have like a half finished report or I mean it's half finished now but really couldn't you have it finished in 10 minutes just like end where you're at and it's a report of course you could some of us have uh, videos like uh, some short videos some people have uh, some resale rights we've bought like from before things like that so we all have stuff and I've actually done a couple of polls like this and 95 percent of internet marketers have some dig something gathering digital dust something unpublished lying around and I think this was when we launched our, our PLR copywriting course um, I, I did a bunch of polls I, I pulled hundreds of people in our from our subscribers and it the number was 95% it wasn't 90% it wasn't 99% it was 95% of, of everyone I knew um, who who did some kind of internet business online had something unpublished laying around so you have stuff that you could put in, you have bonuses and things like that, that you, maybe you created it, maybe you bought it, but you have bonuses that you can put inside of your download page, your membership site, but am I really going to spend all day clicking this post, add new thing, and in my case, I had a lot of different audios, am I going to sit around all day, because if I, if I actually bring this up, um, here is the, the folder where I stored because I think we we started with um, some interviews this is an interview from from Lance and I and uh, these are all see like 20 they're all about 20 minutes we had like a very focused 20 minutes uh, over and over some went to 30 minutes but if you look at this folder uh, well we have 154 interviews that we recorded over the years and that's fine because if someone wants to see things like how do I quit my day job they can search or click and get right to that audio someone needs to see I have a membership site what are the best membership plugins for that they can go right to that audio uh, so we but we did that for 154 different short interviews which ended up being 64 hours so do you think I'm gonna click on post add new every single time and add all these posts well I mean I, I can't even calculate how long that would take and if I could even finish it because what I wanted to do was take all these different this 1.7 gigabytes of audios and this and these are even um, like low we, we compress these quite a bit so even compressed it's almost two gigabytes of of audios I mean you listen to these for for what almost three days straight before you ran out so pretty crazy stuff but what I wanted to do was kind of put it into a nice cute little package here where someone can just go and, and look at the course on double your subscribers which is a list building course and they could click on and view the the transfer we had they can click on and view or listen to just one particular audio if you're taking a walk driving your car have it on the background in your desk uh, but I wanted to add all these posts and I didn't want to click on uh, posts add new every time and so I wanted to use our little our little plugin that I'm going to show you in just a minute called WP import which will allow you to take basically a, a bunch of a bunch of blog post content whether you want to type it in it all in one, in one go if you want to upload a zip file this plugin will allow you to just dump a bunch of a bunch of content a bunch of posts into any WordPress blog or membership site you can have all the content come out live drip it out backdate it I'm going to show you in a second but I want to show you one final uh, thing here which is called Robert Plank's blog many of you have seen it this is my personal blog where I just you know if I have something to say out in public I just kind of share it if it's something that's too long for an email or I don't want it to get lost in a message board somewhere where no one reads it I post it on my blog but I also kind of have a lot of fun 
And so uh, many of us who have smartphones, I don't know if you happen to have an iPhone, Droid, Blackberry, iPad, whatever, we have a lot of fun with all the little apps and stuff and things that, that we can add to it, right? So I created a blog post called Best iPhone Apps. I made, I made the first one in 2010, the year 2010, and listed nine of them. And then went back and in 2011 updated it, listed nine more. And all I did pretty much was just I wrote maybe, I don't know, three sentences or so about each app. And then went on YouTube and found someone reviewing the app and then put that YouTube video just above it or just below it. And so that was pretty cool because, I mean, it literally took me, I want to say about 20, 30 minutes because I just had to write a couple of sentences and then went in and uh, found videos that other people had made. And, I mean, Google, for some reason, they love it when you use YouTube videos on your site. And I, and I don't know why they reward that movie because it means that um, that you're sending people back to their site. Who knows? But this is just one single blog post. And all I did was listed nine iPhone apps, went back, listed nine more, uh, you know, a year later, found nine videos. And then for, for these apps, see how like this one, this kayak app, I actually linked to the Apple App Store. Um, there's a, a site called LinkShare where you can get basically an affiliate link to any iPhone or iPod app, I think any like iTunes song even, you can get an affiliate commission. Uh, and so I just figured, what the heck, you know, I'll get a couple of links, I'll put it out there, I'll forget about this blog post. I checked about a year later and $3,500 in sales from one blog post. And at any given time during that year, there were about five people on that blog post. At, even if I checked in the middle of the night, there were always ex right around five people on that blog post, and they had all come from Google searching uh, best iPhone apps. So they would they go to Google and they searched best iPhone apps, and because I didn't update it for for the, the following year, I dropped in the rankings. Because why? Well, because Google can do whatever they want, and one day you're on top, next day you're gone, right? Uh, but at the time, I, I think I ranked, I wasn't number one, but I outranked Time Magazine, I outranked PC Magazine, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering at this point if, um, if I update it and put, the, put new videos in there, if I'll actually outrank them again. But the point is that, you know, I didn't really care because my, my blog isn't a blog about iPhone apps, so it's not really my focus, but I mean, pretty cool, right? All I did was I just made a blog post, put on some YouTube videos, and then uh, made 3500 bucks in sales. They only pay me about 200 bucks in commissions, but 200 bucks from 20 minutes of work? I mean, fine. I mean, there we go. Like That, that made um, my day when I checked on that. So pretty cool stuff how just one little blog post can make you a bunch of money. Uh, and I do that every now and then I do something goofy like um, this is a blog post. Man, I, I need to update some of these. But uh, this was called Top 5 Productivity Devices of 2011. And when I and I just found, uh, I think I, yeah, I found like five different items, high ticket items that I used on a regular basis to be more productive. Like there's this light that I actually, I used yesterday even. If you're having trouble waking up, you can turn on this, it's this really bright light. And I think that the, like the color, what's called the color temperature, it's like, it simulates sunlight and it wakes you up. And so, but, and it costs a couple hundred bucks. So I'm like, okay, well, I use that. Let me just uh, put a video on here and link to it on Amazon.com. Uh, here's a, a backup hard drive I use because everyone has lost files. This is a backup hard drive where uh, there's, there's actually two drives. You put one here, you put one there, and when you have your, your computer off to the side and you save a file, it actually saves two copies. It saves a copy here, a copy here, so that, let's say that this hard drive craps out there's still a copy over on this one. And all you have to do is put a new hard drive right in here and then it will, it'll copy it back and now you have two copies again. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and, and this, I think we only made one sale of this, one sale at 560 bucks. Uh, and I think Amazon gives you 15% commission. So what is that, 70, 80 bucks just from saying, here's some of my stuff. And it's a blog post where normally my immediate measurable income would be zero dollars, right? Because I mean, I make a blog post because I want to build my list, I want to make sales, I want to keep in contact. But other than that, I can't really measure that this particular blog post made me these sales because we have people, like we said, like like Robin Muff, where I meet you 
three years ago and you become a repeat customer, I can't really I can't really put an exact dollar value on what what meeting you was like. It's like we just met, we started a relationship, and then you ended up you know buying it, things like that. So so we're talking about all these things today about like you know like putting blog posts on your blog, putting content in your membership site, but Many times we want to just like dump a bunch of stuff in there, right? We want to put in a bunch of membership content. We want to um, have a, a public blog that updates on its own without us having to come back to it every day or every week or every month. We don't want to have a chore, right? Um, and so that's why I created this tool called WP Import. Whoops, WP Import right there. I'm going to show you to. I'm going to show it to you right now because this is kind of a cool tool uh, because we have many blogs where let me um, just bring up a couple. We have several blogs and some of them I have to go back and, and see if uh, they need updating. But if a site needs updating, then no big deal. I'll just dump a bunch new of new articles in there. And these are all sites where we get people coming in from search engines. They end up joining our list, so it's worth having these sites on here. Uh, but these are just sites where, uh, where you know, articles come out on a regular basis. I don't really keep track too much of, of, uh, you know, is this one going to update every single day, every week? As long as they're updating on a somewhat consistent basis, that's what I want. And so for this one, it looks like um, it stopped around last year. So now I filled this back up with articles again. I go back here and I say, okay, well, this one, let me just click on the button and retweet this and click on that. And then boom, now we get some extra links juice, some extra traffic back to this blog post. So it's good to have a lot of Let's see. In this one, we have blog posts here. Uh, it's good to have a lot of, of different blogs where there's just content kind of pumping up out there on a regular basis, right? And so uh, what we can do is use this plugin called WP Import and just fill up a brand new blog with content. So let me just do that right now. Let me uh, set up a blog. I'll just do this off screen just so that we don't have to worry about pausing anything. So I'm going to make a, a blog. I'm going to put it on the, our site that we use for our, our test sites called membership newbie I'm gonna put it on a on a folder called new one so let me just go ahead and really quickly make my, uh, my set up my blog here set up my user accounts all that good stuff and the blog has been created so here we go we have a brand new blog and you might have seen this like a brand new WordPress site there's nothing on it okay and what we want to do is add some new content here so we'll log into the back end of this site called membership newbie you just log in here and if you look at the post we can see yeah there's there's one post here I guess we'll just leave that but there's nothing here right and we want to to fill this up with content so what we can do is just to do something real simple we could go to some, a site like this for example master dash resale dash rights and I think they have a category for articles let me just search articles I guess so we've got articles, and so yeah, here we go. They've got so they've got ebooks, um, ebooks. All right, let me do a search for PLR articles, and that's kind of weird. I could have sworn they used to have a article category. So it looks like these are all. So maybe they've switched to just books. Maybe that's kind of weird. Um, maybe product name contains articles. Here we go. So this, so there's 20 stress articles, 20 pet grooming articles, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to some of these articles. These are some articles that I've written, and so um, so I've got 10 articles, right? I'm just going to delete that, and I've got every article is in a separate text file with the title at the top. So this might be something where I, you know I wrote it, might have written it on my phone, might have, might have just sat down and written it, but the point is that I have 10 articles. I have 10 text files. Each text file has an article in it. So what I want to do is somehow get this onto my blog. Well, what's the old way, the outdated way, the hard way of doing it? What we do is we go to uh, Posts, Add New, and then we have to go back over here. We have to find this article. We have to go and select this title, right-click and copy. We have to go back here to the title, right-click and paste. We have to go back here to the, the body, select all this, right click and copy, go back to the body here, right click and paste. If there are any links, we have to make sure those are hyperlinked. If we want to put it in the category, that's what we want to do. Uh, and if this is a membership site, we have to say, I want this to be on, protected on this membership level, all kinds of crazy stuff.
So you could do it that way. And oh yeah, and now congratulations, now you have one article and maybe you'll have to choose what data comes out. But I mean, this, this is gonna take us all day. So instead, let's just do it in a few seconds. So what we can do is we can just go and find all these, um, all of these articles here. I'm just going to right click and hold down and select, right click and say add to archive, add, or no, hey, let me do this right. We go send to compressed folder, right? So no matter what your zip program is, uh, this is what's built in the Windows. So we select all these files. We said send to compressed folder. I'll show you one more time. Select all these. Send to compressed folder. And then maybe we'll just call this list building so that we know what these articles are all about. So now we have what's called a zip file of package of 10 articles. Whoops, if I can find where I was. 10 articles all in a, what's called a zip file, right? And so we want to get the zip file somehow to our into our site, but there's no way of doing it without this WP import plugin. So I'm going to go to plugins, add new, and I'm going to upload this plugin that that we just bought at WP import. And let me just go right here and add this plugin, install now, and activate the plugin. And then let's go to the plugin page, and I have to put in my key. So uh, one second. As I save that, okay, cool. So we're back right here into this plugin that I've created that I've been maintaining for uh, over four years now called WP Import. And there's lots of stuff, but the point is that you can just click a button and then you can find, not that one, you can find this zip file that we just created. So you can just select a zip file and it will post each article as a, as a post on your blog. So pretty cool stuff. I guess let's just try it. Let's go nuts and see what happens. So click on the zip file, and then we can, yeah, let's just preview it and see what happens. So what this will do is it will say, okay, well, on September 12th, it'll give you this blog post, this title, and maybe we can, like, you know, edit that. Um, it'll give you this article. We can go in and see that this will be on September 13th, 14th, 15th, all that. So it looks like by doing this, then every day we'll get a new uh, blog post stripped out and what this will also do is um, this will these will come out on different times of the day we can adjust that we can make this come out you know at a spe like always in the morning always in the afternoon we can space these out to be like once every seven days and and you know choose what category maybe make a new category so for example if we had say like 10 different categories we'll we just make 10 different zip files and just do this 10 times and now you saved yourself adding hundreds of articles, and now they can all be any way that you want. So uh, let me just say they'll be comments disabled. Uh, we can have these all as drafts posts. So if you're kind of like me and you want to just like have a pool of content and you just want to be able to just grab whatever sounds good this month or this week, then that's for you. But let's just say we'll make these posts, turn off comments, um, keep them in the, in the default category, and just post them once a day. Click on Continue. And here's what it's done. It said, "It said, okay, well, uh, it well, f that's weird how it spaced those ones out. But um, here's what we just published, right? We've got ten posts scheduled, and this one uh, was published last night, and the rest will come out in the future. And so, if you look at the site, what we'll see, if everything went well, cool, we see that we have one blog post that was that was already live, right? But the rest." are coming out in the future and what this means is that well if I look at my posts again we can see that well these are all uh, scheduled see this is scheduled so in going forward in the future uh, we'll get one coming out every day and if we ever decide we want to change up this category these categories if we want to make this one for example come out on a different day you know we can now that one's live and now that one's backdated uh, but now these are are all ready to go and what we could have done uh, is we could have said, well, I want to start posting these a month ago, right? I want to start posting these a year ago, or I want to start posting them, you know, today and just put out, uh, you know, one every 30 days, something like that, right? So we have total control over, do we want to just dump a bunch of articles out? Do you want to have a new post come out every, just have it come out every one second, right? Or do you want to just have these come over every one week? But you can do any way you want. 
You can have it all come out right now, all come out in the past, all, all strip out in the future, and there's lots of, you have total control over this, and what I like about this as well is if we mess something up, I can say, you know what, can I just undo what I just did, click on that button, and I, I've just added 10 posts, but I want to take those back, and maybe maybe I had some typos, or I decided I didn't want to space these out, click on that button, and if all goes well, then it says, okay, cool, these were all deleted from our blog, and if we look back at our, our posts again, boom, now we're just back to the original post uh, that was on, on there right there. So pretty cool stuff. And um, so that works, you know, if you want to, if you have your own articles ready to go, if you want to buy articles from people. I know that what I, what I do is I will uh, speak out articles and then go to a, a freelance site and then someone will return me a zip file containing articles. And now I can just go and psh, upload that zip file that they've given me. Um, and even if you kind of, if you want to just fill up a, um, like a public blog, I got a really cool feature that I think you're gonna love, which is well, if you if you happen to have, uh, well, this is for if if someone comes back with a zip file and says this is on a link, you can do that. But you can enter new content in manually, so this is pretty cool. Check this one out. Enter content manually, and what the, what we've done is we said, um, what did we say? That we want these to come out every one day, right? So this comes out in the morning. This comes out late at night. So every one day, uh, but there's no title, there's no body. So if we want to fill this up with a bunch of, of new content, maybe even some short, maybe like our tweets or some old articles, we can just paste some things in here. So what if, what if we went back here to WP Import and we said, I want to post a new article uh, every 30 days. Well then now, if you wanted to fill up this brand new site with a year of content, then what, do, what would we need? We'd need 12 posts, right? And that, and every month the new blog post would go live. Um, and if we and what WordPress blogs also do is they do a thing called blog and ping. So these will hit all the what are called ping sites, and that also means it'll be listed on the search engines in a few minutes. Back in the dark ages, you would put out something, and if it got listed in Google in a month, you'd be lucky. But now you put it out there, and boom, in minutes it's already out there. I mean, if we, even if we looked up like the Apple Keynote uh, stuff going on. Or what is it called? Apple Launch, maybe. Um, live events show up on Google in a matter of minutes. 32 minutes ago, uh, six hours ago. Uh, but yeah, I've even launched a blog post and checked, and it said literally five minutes ago this post was was uh, listed in Google. So pretty cool stuff. And so if all you did was just had 12 blog posts, now you have everything scheduled up for the next year. So if we entered post manually every 30 days upload file so all you have to do is figure out what's this month what's that month what's that month and so what we could do is just say well, let me open up easy articles let me upload YouTube because what did we say we said that Google rewards you for adding in relevant content it's fine if that content's available elsewhere but if you can help their visitors find the content they're looking for quickly, well then you've still done your job. So if we have, if we fill up this blog with just 12 posts, maybe six articles, six, uh, six videos, then that's just fine. And so what we can do here is, uh, let me say, let me search this site for maybe membership sites, search Google for membership sites, and let me just, um, ooh, Lance Tomashiro, let's bring up this, bring up this, bring up this, Whoops. So let me post, uh, get all those. So I'm going to say, all right, let's take this one, how to create a membership site. This title will be that, and then that'll be that. Okay. This video is creating membership sites is easy. So we'll take that and paste that one in, and then uh, paste in that link. And then this other one, make money with fixed term sites. Uh, we'll paste that one in. Whoops, and then paste in the link right there. And then let's get some easy articles. Let me just grab a let me just grab a couple. We don't want to spend all day on this. Um, so should use the hosted membership site manager and we'll put that one in there. And then this person, make sure I get her name by Rebecca Prescott, and then put in her uh, her whole article. Okay, so we copy that. 
So now we're on what is this like month month four, month five? And the and cool thing about easing is they leave their their little byline intact here. Uh, so we'll grab that. WordPress versus Joomla. Let me just put in that article here. And this is Lewis S. So let me copy that one. Make sure we got that. And I mean that that's good enough. So what is that? Five months of content we added in about about two minutes. So what we've done, if I can zoom out a little bit here, is we've got three YouTube videos and then three articles. And I'll just go ahead and post those. And cool. So we've got five posts scheduled for the next year. But let me just go back and let me um let me edit the, the dates on these. Let me just put these way back in the future so that we can kind of see what the site would look like once it's all live. And what's cool about this as well, it, and I didn't have time to show you, but if we have a membership site, uh, it'll also show which levels you can and can't add this to. But just for to make it simple, let me just uh, show you what this site here looks like. So we've got this site, and boom. So we've got articles by Rebecca Prescott. We've got different YouTube videos. We've got videos here and here. So it's smart enough to know that even if we just paste a, a link to YouTube, it will it will put this in here in as a video. So pretty cool stuff. And I mean, even if I went to one of our membership sites like Webinar Crusher real quick, and I went to plugins, I think I might have an older version of the imports. Oh, no, I don't even have it. Cool. So add new plugin. Then add the plugin called WP Imports. And that is right there. And then once that gets on there, uh, I'll show it for membership sites as well. So plugin's been activated. And we will go to import this. And we put in my key off screen. So here we go. This is WP import. And one thing that you might notice is a little bit different is that because it detected that we're using Wishlist member as our membership site, it says, well, do you want to, to leave it unprotected, which is the default, or if you want to make the, these new uploaded articles on these particular membership levels, then you can do that as well. So pretty cool stuff. You can type in new content. You can upload articles, any of that good stuff. And it's all possible using this plugin called WP Import. It's a simple WordPress plugin that installs in just a couple of clicks to your blog. And it means that you can now upload text files into your WordPress blog. You can upload a zip file containing thousands of articles. I think I've tested it once at a thousand articles. Haven't gone past that, but I mean, potentially that would still work. So you can put in 10 articles, 100 articles, 1,000 articles, and now they're all on there. And now you don't have to go through any kind of tedious copy and paste. Uh, but if you want to go around the internet and just find, I'm going to paste in this link, paste in that link, we allow you to make it super easy for you. And you don't have to click on that post add new button a thousand different times. So you might fill up your blog with articles you've written, with articles that you've hired out and had paid to get written, articles that you found for free because some of these syndication sites allow you to use it for free as long as you leave the links in the resource box intact. Maybe old articles you forgot about and said, well, you know what? I had these articles that were building someone else's site over on an article site. It's going to help me to have these on my blog as well. And just like how, I mean, me personally, I'm creating a podcast. I have a blog. You should have those kinds of things as well where someone can find you on the internet and find what you're all about. Maybe articles you bought rights to, but either way, wherever the content comes from, a couple of clicks and it's in using WP import. It saves you hours of time scheduling content. And even if you do outsource, it saves you lots of money. And I, I don't know about you, but the aggravation that I save is priceless. Okay. So I personally created this plugin. My name is Robert Plank. There's nothing else like it on the market. I've used it repeatedly for years to instantly populate many of my membership sites and drip out content on my public sites. So I get a pack of articles made, I dump it in and it's all on automatic pilot. Okay, so with WP import, you can upload text or zip files from the browser. You can specify what date to post at, how often, what time of day to post, if you want pages or posts, comments on or off, what category. You can even preview it now with this latest updated version. If you've already bought WP import, if you're already a member of Membership Cube, you have this updated version. And if not, well, then you can just log in and, and uh, update it for free. And if you're not yet a WP Import customer, you can go right now to WP 
wpimport.com. I'm going to type it in the, the box here. That's wpimport.com. Should be showing up there in the chat box. Uh, just in case, I'm going to be putting this in that question box as well. wpimport.com. I created this four years ago, and I have been updating it ever since. You can upload a zip file of articles, blog posts, even video code. I mean, WordPress doesn't discriminate what's in the blog post, but it saves you so much time. Go and post, add new, choose a title, choose a category, blah, blah, blah. No, just upload a zip file full of articles. Our new bulk enter functionality lets you add lots of new content manually. You can add these as post pages, drafts, categories, even choose the level if this is inside of a membership site, you can backdate these out in the past. You can ship these out in the future. You can make these come out an hour apart, a day apart, weeks apart, anywhere in between. And how about this? In the members area right now, I've added a zip file containing 22,000 private label rights articles that you have the rights to right now today. And they're, they're on every possible category from heartburn, acne, to travel, anything you want. There are 22,000 articles. And what I did was I bought several, several of these article packs. And I think it, when I built it up, it had like 300,000 different articles. But some sucked. But some were duplicates. But some didn't make sense. And once I kind of narrowed it down, there were 22,000 articles left in any possible niche. So if you want to make a brand new blog from scratch, choose the niche. Find the articles, name it, upload it, and then now your content is all filled up. So I keep seeing all these questions. Uh, that's what's the cost? What's the price? How do I get it? Well, if it was $497 for this tool, would it be worth it to fill up your membership site quickly and bypass the content problem and not have to spend six months on it and get it done in a few minutes? Well, yeah, it would be worth $497. Would it be worth $297 to have all of your articles in one place? Well, I think so. Someone can find you and find all the stuff you've written, all the videos you've made. Would it be worth $197 to schedule a year of blog posts and not have to worry about your blog content problem for one year? I mean, you can decide yourself, but I think that it's awesome to be able to schedule a year in advance. Would it be worth $97 for the 22,000 bonus articles alone? Would it be worth $47 to be able to use this on as many sites as you want? If you have any, a new idea for a blog for a site, don't even think about it. Just get the name, register it, upload it, and now all the content is in there. Would it be worth $37 to stop worrying and get your blog working for you for a change? Would it be worth $27 for one full year of updates and maybe more so far? I've updated it for four years, but if we make like some kind of drastic feature, I'm, I'm not sure in the future, but for now we're guaranteeing one full year of updates. Would it be worth $17? to shortcut months in the minutes, or even just $7 to get back to your business and your life. Well, you're in luck. Today's your lucky day. I'm glad we're on this call together because it's just $7 right now. Ridiculous, I know, right? To upload, to get 22,000 articles, to upload a zip file full of articles, to be able to bulk add content, categories, pages, comments, membership levels, $7, wpimport.com. So go ahead, claim yours right now. Go to wpimport.com. We'll go together. Go to www.wpimport.com. P O R T dot com W P import dot com. Once you go here, there's a, just a very quick video in it, and there's not much here because there's nothing to think about. There's our plugin called W P import. Upload a zip file, add content, seven dollars, thirty day money back guarantee. Go ahead, do it right now. Go to W P import dot com W P I M P O R T dot com. My name is Robert Plank, and I look forward to seeing you inside the members area for wpimport.com. Thanks a bunch. Have a great day. Go make some blocks.